This individual was Francois Gatton Borby, the former president of Chad and one of the most unconventional dictators the continent has ever seen. During his leadership, Tambo Bay implemented some unusual policies that raised eyebrows and left a disgruntled population in Chad. For instance, he ordered high-ranking government officials, civil servants, and military officers to undergo a traditional initiation ritual called Yondo, which could sometimes be fatal. Yondo, which Tambo Bay himself had experienced as an adolescent, involved practices like flogging, facial scarring, dragging, and mock burials. Within five years of taking office in 1960, his heavy-handed approach and repressive regime alienated a significant portion of Chad's population, especially those from the northern and eastern regions, leading to rebellions across the country. Francois Bolb was born in Bethsaida, southern Chad, on June 15, 1918. He hailed from the Saar ethnic group, the predominant ethnicity among Chad's numerous prefectures. Not much is known about his early life but he received primary education in Chad and pursued secondary education in Congo Brazzaville, where he trained to become a teacher due to the absence of local schools in Chad. While working as a teacher in the late 1940s, he became interested in civic life. By 1946, he became the president of an independent trade union based in Sara, Chad. He also played a pivotal role in establishing a local chapter of the Chad Progressive Party, PPT, in Tsar, recruiting members from his clan and other Sara speakers. The PPT aimed to fight for Chad's independence from French colonial rule, and Francois effectively mobilized anti-colonial sentiments in Chad. In response, the French administration stripped him of his teaching job in public service in 1949, leading him to find other employment, including brickmaking. Despite facing discrimination from the French colonial authorities due to his activism, Tom Borbai was elected as a deputy in the Colonial Territorial Assembly in 1952, and he was re-elected in 1957 and 1959. Meanwhile, within the PPT, tensions grew towards Gabriel Lazette, a foreigner, and Tom Bay eventually assumed leadership. After ousting Lazette as the PPT leader, Tom Borbai took over as the head of Chad's provisional government in March 1959, and was chosen as prime minister in the newly elected Legislative Assembly in June the same year. Lazette, whose influence waned, became deputy prime minister in charge of economic coordination and foreign affairs. Francois consolidated support from both the southern and northern regions, isolating the opposition as a group of conservative Muslim leaders from central Chad. These leaders formed a political party in 1960, but steadily lost parliamentary representation as Francois brought members into the PPT. On August 11, 1968, Francois Tamborbay became Chad's first president after gaining independence. However, his leadership faced numerous challenges. Chad was a vast, resource-poor nation with underdeveloped infrastructure, a diverse population, and deep ethnic and regional divisions. Francois Tamborbay's autocratic style of leadership and his distrust of democratic institutions further exacerbated these challenges, his actions included declaring a ban on all political parties except the PPT and suppressing opposition ruthlessly. He introduced Africanization policies, aiming to move away from colonial structures, but this led to further unrest. By the end of his rule, Chad faced economic hardships, ethnic tensions, and a centralization of power in the hands of Francois Tamborbay. His leadership was marked by authoritarianism and a disregard for democratic norms. Regrettably, the policy of Africanization faced significant opposition within Chad's population, particularly among farmers and herders. Despite their strong resentment of French colonial rule, the abrupt removal of French officials led to a noticeable decline in the quality of government services. This decline was partly due to the typical challenges of such a transition, but it was also because many of the newly hired Chadians lacked experience and proper training compared to their departing French counterparts. Moreover, the majority of Western-educated, French-speaking citizens were Southerners, which led people from the North to view Africanization as a Southern takeover of Chad's government. 
To many Northerners and Central Chadians, the policy of Africanization symbolized a blatant power grab by Southerners, who were seen as culturally distinct and sometimes arrogant, much like the departing French. Additionally, Francois Tambourbaï's failure to implement hiring and training policies aimed at achieving greater ethnic and regional balance in public administration was one of his significant shortcomings. Adding to the discontent, Tambourbaï imposed additional taxes in 1964 under the guise of a national loan supposedly meant to fund local industries, but, in reality, was funded through burdensome taxes on an already impoverished population. Reports also emerged of government administrators forcing rural citizens to pay three times the official tax rates. Moreover, Tambourbaï failed to adequately involve leaders from central and northern Chad in political discussions. Tambourbaï's introduction of Authenticity, a cultural revolution in 1973 aimed at Africanizing Chad, brought further controversy. The policy involved replacing European names with African ones for individuals and places. While initially well received, it later exacerbated tensions when Tambourbaï ordered the revival of the ancient pagan ritual known as Yondo, a brutal initiation rite practiced by his Sa'a tribal group, causing further divisions among the Chadian population. These actions, along with regional discrimination and a repressive regime, fueled Chad's fragmentation during Francois Tambourbaï's 15-year presidency. By 1975, he faced armed opposition across the country and was eventually ousted in a coup d'etat, marking the end of his turbulent rule.